Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile, and here is the first ever edition of WNBA Weekly. The first thing I want you to know about is that for WNBA Weekly, I decided to go with a slightly different format because the NBA has 30 teams each playing 82 games a season. With the WNBA, 12 teams each playing about 30 games a year, so I can go much more in-depth. And So for those of you who followed me from the NBA, you know I like to talk about milestones, different things that players have or could achieve. So for the WNBA season, while I'm talking about each game that's coming, I will spotlight a few players from those teams and talk about milestones that they could conceivably achieve in that game. And if I don't mention your favorite player, don't take it personally. It just means that either I didn't think they were able to achieve a significant milestone or I simply missed it. Sue me. So with all of that in mind, here is the first official episode of WNBA Weekly, and these are the games that you can catch over the weekend. Uh, you can watch any of these games on live access, but only the Friday and Sunday games are being broadcast nationally. The reason I'm putting this up early is because today, Thursday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a 2013 WNBA season preview on NBA TV. I don't know if it'll be any good, but I'm going to check it out, and I thought, yo, know, if you, in case you didn't know about it, I'll mention it, so, because you might want to check it out. I really don't know. The very first game of the WNBA 2013 season will be the Indiana Fever Star at the San Antonio Silver Stars. The season opener, and Tamika Catchings leads the defending champion Fever into San Antonio to face future Hall of Famer Becky Hammond and the Silver Stars. And this game will be broadcast on NBA TV at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And first we're going to look at a few milestones potentially. Uh, Daniel Adams, she's only started five games in her two-year career, but has a constant impact on the team. She is currently four offensive rebounds away from the hundredth of her career, and four assists away from the fiftieth career, and she is 12 points away from, the, from 700 for her career. And Becky Hammond, she has made 1,823 field goals in her career, and is two made field goals behind Shamik Holdsclaw for tenth on the all-time list. Now, a, few, a little bit of injury news from this game. The Indiana Fever have lost guard Aaron Phillips for what's estimated to be four to six weeks with a torn meniscus in her right knee. And I mention her first because one, this is the most re recent injury to the roster, and two, the news came just after her birthday. Yes, I recently found out that she and I actually have the same birthday. It was, um, it, it was May 19th, which was this past Sunday. She just turned... So I just wanted to take the time to say to you. you are now my third favorite guard in the league. Wait, fourth. Fourth favorite guard in the league. And the Fever will also be without guard J Jeanette Poland and center Jessica Davenport. And for the Sil Silver Stars, Becky Hammond broke her middle finger on her right hand Saturday during training camp. And as of recording this, I have no idea whether or not she'll play. My prediction is that injuries could play a significant role in this game, but for the Fever, the one thing you know, they, for at least for now, they do have Tamika Catchings, they do have Katie Douglas, and for those two players alone, I see the Fever easily coming away with a win. And then on Saturday, you've got two games being played. One of them is the New York Liberty at the Connecticut Sun. The New York Liberty have a new coaching staff and look to make a statement with a win against Tina Charles and the Sun, who were the number one team in the Eastern Conference for the entire 2012 regular season. And a few milestones for you. Cappy Pondexter needs two more assists to become just the 16th player in WNBA history with a thousand for her career. Katie Smith, she is eight made field goals behind the new assistant coach, Mama Taj, for fifth place on the all-time list. Misty Bass, she needs seven more points to reach 700 for her career. Kelsey Griffin, assuming she plays, this will be the 100th game of her career. And her next assist will be number 70 for her career. Allison Tower, once again, assuming she plays, this game will be the 80th of her career. She is two steals away from the 70th of her career. And Tan White needs to make four more field goals to reach 800 for her career. Renee Montgomery, her next offensive rebound will be the 50th of her career. Essence Carson is two made free throws away from two, the 200th of her career. And here's my prediction for how this game will turn out. 
I think the Liberty have a good core of players and a great coaching staff. And I feel like this early in the season, they they should be able to come out strong and still a win in Connecticut. I just think that, you know, this is a team that people don't yet know what they're going to throw at them and how to defend them yet. You know, as the season goes on, you're going to see teams making those adjustments, you know, towards all of these teams and all of these different players. So I think New York is one of the teams that will be able to grab a strong start. Next, you have the Shock at the Dream. You know, the third overall pick, Skylar Diggins, makes her WNBA debut against Angel McCautry and the Atlanta Dream. You know, a few milestones, Renika Hodges is three steals away from the 100th of her career. Gloria Johnson had a great rookie season and is now five offensive rebounds away from the 100th of her career, two assists away from 40, and eight points away from 400. Jennifer Lacey needs to make five more field goals to have 400 for her career. She needs two more three-pointers to have 100 for her career. And if she makes four more free throws, she will have 200 for her career. And her next offensive rebound will be the 200th of her career. She's also three steals away from 100 for her career. And Courtney Paris, the next free throw she makes will be number 50 of her career. And she needs two more steals to reach 30 for her career. And Kyla Peterson, she needs to make four free throws to reach 70 for her career. And my prediction, the Shock have some talent on their roster. And they shouldn't make a contest of it. But I think today they'll lose out to the more experienced team. And then on Sunday, you have the Seattle Storm at the Los Angeles Sparks. The Storm go into the season without their biggest stars, looking to still have a big season. And their first stop is Los Angeles, where they will face Candace Parker, who seems to be nominated for MVP every season. And this game will be broadcast on NBA TV at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a few milestones here. Tina Thompson is three steals behind Sherry Sam for 16th on the all-time list. Tamika Johnson needs two more offensive rebounds to have 100 for her career. Ewelina Cobrin is three made field goals away from 70 for her career and two defensive rebounds away from 100 for her career. Marissa Coleman is nine points away from 800 for her career. Lindsey Harding, her next three-pointer will be the 70 of her career. She is also two offensive rebounds away from 100 for her career. Ebony Hoffman, if she makes four more field goals, she'll have 700 for her career. And Neka Ngumakwe... Uh, is two offensive rebounds away from 100 for her career, and her next block will be the 30th of her career. And my prediction, you know, Seattle, they, they suffered from some huge losses. They've still got a good leader at coach. They've still got some veteran, some veteran playmakers. I expect them to make a contest of it. But in the end, I think the Los Angeles Sparks, they bring way too much firepower to the table. I don't think the Storm have what it takes to shut down Candace Parker and all of these different playmaking playmakers they have at the guard position. I don't expect the Sparks to like completely blow them out, but I expect to see total domination from them from start to finish. Well, that's it for this episode of WMA Weekly, and remember this one is early just because of that preview that's coming on tonight. But normally I'll be uploading WMA Weekly every Monday and Friday morning. So tune in on Monday morning. I'll re I'll recap some of the sc I'll go over some of the scores from last from this weekend, and then tell you about some of the games that are gonna be coming up that week.